everyone. Um, it's Ashley. I have never done one of these audio recording things over YouTube before, so this is probably going to be a little shaky and rambly, but, uh, you know, stick with me. I thought it would be fun to maybe just have a little chit chat with some, maybe some process tips and gouache tips that I have. Um, while you can watch this uh, process video of me painting. Um, so this is being done with gouache. So you'll notice a couple times, you'll notice me like reworking areas. For those that aren't familiar with gouache, it's it's like kind of like a really weird <laughs> painting medium that I feel like people aren't as familiar with as they are with like oil or acrylic. Um, gouache is essentially like a watercolor that is opaque um, and the the main thing about gouache that's kind of cool is that you can rework it when you after it's dry so you can go back over and kind of correct mistakes um, it's cool but it also can be kind of a problem sometimes because depending on the type of gouache you have I especially have a lot of issues with them um, the area is obviously reworked with when it dries it it kind of like creates a little bit of like a film mark from where you re-wetted it. So it can be kind of an issue sometimes for somebody like me who when they use gouache they really want it to be nice and solid and graphic looking and those little tiny little imperfections can really get under my skin. Um, but yeah you'll notice me during this video uh, retouching that blue constantly uh, because I really wanted to make sure that it was solid and I had kind of a hard time. You can already see some of those little splotches, but in the end we got it to work, so just persevere, man. So yeah, I am currently working on this calendar that I originally had started back in, I think it was 2020. At the beginning of 2020, I had high hopes for my, for my, uh, uh, you know, all the things that I had planned. Um, and obviously, uh, the year had different different plans for me but uh so I had started doing this calendar and as I was doing it I originally had done like paper cutouts um like with these two characters and I was planning on having the two characters go across each um month doing a different activity together it was like a girl and a dog um if you follow me on Instagram you'll probably remember me posting those and I was doing it with like paper cutouts and painting the paper cutouts kind of doing like a storybook feel to it pop-up book and I just like after I did February I was like what am I doing I do not like this this is not what I had envisioned and I just I just was really frustrated every time I thought about it and it, it was kind of annoying because I felt like I had put so much time and effort into it um, like planning it before I even started sketching or anything. I, I had like listed out what I wanted to do for each month and some different options and did some different character designs and I thought I was just like solid on it but as I was working on it it just felt it didn't feel like what I had envisioned for my first calendar. I think I just lost interest in it. I think it was a little too involved or something or a little too maybe a little too well thought out or something I, and I wanted it to be a little bit more just like fun um, and I'm sure a lot of you who saw them were like oh yeah it looks it looks fine like what are you talking about but just sometimes when you start a project if you're not feeling it anymore it's best to just revamp it step back redo it um, so this is what I'm doing with this this project is I kind of decided since 2020 kind of just went off the rails and uh, the project just kind of disintegrated anyways I decided I would try it again in 2021 and do one for each month and uh, you know in November of 2021 I'm going to sell the calendar um, I'll have like pre-orders available and uh, it will be the calendar will be for 2022 so seems like a ways away but you know the year will probably end up flying by. Um, I mean, it's already almost the end of February, so yeah. So anyways, so this is the, the new and improved calendar that I'm working on. Um, and I just, uh, I just decided to do something fun and random for each one. I just 
for each month and I decided that I wanted to, uh, for January, do something kind of cozy and wintry, but I didn't want to be too on the nose with like snowflakes or anything like that. So she's got a little scarf and right now I'm working on the gradient on it. Um, and that was, I don't know why I decided to try to do a smooth gradient with gouache. That was, oof. I mean, it ended up looking okay, but man, it was a headache to work on. Gouache is kind of weird, like, to blend out. I usually, you'll see me do it a little bit later. I usually do, like, dry brushing when I shade with gouache because it's a lot easier to control. And it's usually better because you're not fighting the texture and the consistency of the paint. Instead, you're kind of, like, going with it and using it to, like, using the strengths or the weaknesses as strengths instead of opposite so this worked out though um i just i would not recommend it if you've never used gouache before please don't do that um you can see a little bit of a jump forward in time with the blue <laughs> it's all wet again because i put another layer down hoping it would look more opaque but you'll notice a couple of those jumps and you'll and i just i just couldn't get it quite solid but it was fine once i started adding the texture so um so yeah, I decided to do like a wintry vibe and this winter I've just been eating like oodles and oodles of pho and ramen. And so I just was like, I don't know, lately it's just been like every time I want some comfort food, I just want a big bowl of soup or pho and I just like, it just like makes me so happy. It just feels like a big warm blanket. So. I just kind of wanted to do an illustration that sort of expressed that. Um, so that's what this is. This is for January. I'm currently working on the one for February. Uh, it's a little... I'm really excited about February's. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's where we're at with this. Um, I decided the only theme that I would have throughout this calendar would be gouache. So each... And I'm, I'm kind of going to do like... A similar style for each month as well um, so yeah it's a I think it's gonna turn out a lot better I'm feeling a lot more positive about it so I don't know um, but yeah so I would love to like answer questions if you have any so I'm gonna kind of just explain how like my process and what I'm doing with gouache um, and if you have any questions just comment down below um, or you can DM me on my Instagram um, all those links are in the description box if you aren't sure where to find me on Instagram so um, with gouache I usually at least with this kind of style that I'm doing I usually like to just block out all the shapes with like a good solid color um i honestly i really do it every time i use gouache i'm sure other people have different processes but for me it really helps to get all the colors picked out and just lay them down and see how they interact with each other um and then i add all of the little teensy details at the end um gouache can be used opaquely and transparently so right here you can see that I'm doing it a little bit more on the thin side um, but the rest of the painting is done pretty opaque which means I don't add a lot of water to it the more water you add the thinner the paint will be so but because they're like little strings I wanted to make sure that they looked kind of like airy and I thought that would be the best way to do that but yeah, if you are interested in doing gouache, um, it's it's a pretty fun medium. It can be a little bit more on the expensive side if you're just casually, um, you're like a casual artist, but um, it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, there are cheaper gouaches out there that you can find, um, but I feel like gouache is one of those things that you really can tell the difference in quality. Uh, if it's not like an artist grade or a professional grade. Um, the student grade stuff, I just haven't had much luck with. You can see right here, I'll just tell you real quick, you see that line I left by her hairline? I did that so that it wouldn't bleed while I was working 
the uh, working the paint on her face still because I was still moving it around and I just didn't want that purple from the hair to start bleeding into the skin color. So I waited until after I had laid it down flat and got it all where I wanted it before I connected the connected the space. Um, but uh, yeah, gouache is really weird because it's essentially just watercolor with opaque white added to it. So you can, um, if you're not looking at spending a lot of money and you want to save some money, you essentially can just get like a set of watercolors of like pretty nice watercolors and, and then just get one or two tubes of white. I usually get two. I usually get um, zinc white and uh, titanium white because they both kind of do different things. Um, and uh, you can just mix it with the watercolors um, to each color. So if you're looking for like a cheaper way to use gouache, you can do that. Personally, I feel like it's kind of fussy um, and I feel like it takes up a lot more time and since I've become a little bit more interested in gouache, I've just decided to invest in getting tubes of it because you can find some really fun colors out there and it saves you time and I don't know, it's just fun. Because the thing about gouache that's kind of neat is you can use it to like block down, block out ideas really quick with like color combos you like. So. It's kind of nice to have just preset tubes or whatever, pre-mixed tubes of gouache to just be like, okay, these three colors would look really nice and I'll do a limited color palette with just those three. So um, right now I'm starting to noodle a little bit on the inside of that soup, no pun intended. And uh, I'm just uh, adding like the little kernels of corn, I think is what I had in mind. <sighs> And I'm adding the soup broth and the egg. It looks like I got a little crazy with that uh, bok choy when I was adding the color to it. I decided to do it like that, um, that blend while it was all still wet because it's a lot easier to blend gouache um, if you're wanting like kind of like a smooth, silkier transition versus like a rough dry brush. It's better to do it when it's wet. So you kind of have to act fast. Um, so that's why I did that really quick. I'm kind of surprised I did it like that. And because uh, if I were to go back and do it again, I probably would have just dry brushed it because it would have been easier. But oh well, it's so weird watching myself do these. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, so yeah, so I basically, this is, this is essentially the rest of the blocking in of the colors. So now all the detail is going to come in. Um, and I believe it's even a different day. Yeah, you can see my nail polish changes. <laughs> um, so I waited overnight because I just, sometimes it's, gouache can take a while to dry and it kind of tricks you into thinking it's dry, but it's actually wet. So then as soon as you put down, you can kind of see it was still a little wet there. <laughs> um, or maybe I just went too crazy with it, but I think I save it in the end, but, uh, yeah, so I, I decided to wait, I think it was like at least 12 hours maybe for it to dry. And that should have been plenty of time. So that probably wasn't actually wet. I probably just overworked that area. Um, but it's nice to wait a little bit of time before you add the details. Because then you can make sure that everything's dry and you don't have to stress about that and try to be extra careful because you don't want to disturb another area. So if it gets that extra time to dry, it's less likely to get moved. You can see that I kind of did it right there with the scarf, kind of accidentally got some of that blue on there. But yeah, this is the dry brush technique. I actually got it fairly wet because I wanted it to be a little more scratchy looking and less dry brushy. So I wanted the hairs of the um, brush to make a mark on the on the shirt so it kind of had a different texture and here I am adding some weird highlights to the hair and I, I'm I know I get rid of those later so I don't know what I was doing but sometimes you have to do something and then you know it's wrong <laughs> after you've added it so that's a good example I just I added that highlight on her hair and I decided later what was I doing um and I just put dark purple over it later, I believe. But right now I'm doing all the stripes. Um, I'm just using like a really watered down 
bluish color and I believe as I'm getting to the purple I'm adding a little bit more pink to it so it kind of shifts a little bit with it so it's more of a natural transition and it doesn't look like it doesn't belong as it goes into the purple so the details are always the most fun part um, they're so fun to do and I know people really like watching them in videos because it's it's like satisfying or whatever the internet would say so yeah so enjoy all of these little stripies sorry that um, I kind of throw the painting around a lot and twist it and turn it I just I am so bad at filming myself painting because I just want to feel like I can get the best angle possible when I'm working on it so now here's me adding the dark purple over the top I was like what in the world was I thinking so yeah um, anyways hopefully I get better at that in the future um, and this uh, recording is totally rambly I knew it would be um, Hopefully it has been somewhat interesting and informative, but um, yeah, so now I'm just adding some drop shadows to her face. And now I'm adding like a little bit of pink to her fingers. I always like adding that kind of pinkiness to the tips of the fingers. I think it's really cute and looks kind of rosy and pretty. Um, and I'm doing the same to the ears. And now I'm deciding to paint the face. I actually had completely painted, I had done a completely separate painting of this before filming this one. Uh, and uh, it did not turn out the way I was hoping it would. So this is actually the second attempt. I had done the original one with watercolor and I just was not happy with it. I think it was just a bad medium choice. I think I just decided, nope, I I really want this to be super graphic and, uh, you know, really solid looking. It just it had a different vibe um, with the watercolor. So I just decided to redo it and the face got so messed up. It was like a completely different character than what I had envisioned. And I just, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you make the line and then you're like, that's not quite right. I'll just thicken it up a little bit. And then you just keep going over and over and over it until it's a completely <laughs> different line. It's a complete mess and there's no saving it. So, um, yeah, so I was a lot happier <laughs> with how this face turned out. Um, yeah, it's pretty cute. My nails actually go with the painting. I didn't mean to do that. So yeah, I'm hoping to make some more YouTube videos in the near future. Um, I'm trying to do like at least one a month. Um, we'll see how frequent, but hopefully I'll be able to do more than that, like little ones, but it's actually quite a lot of work to edit videos, but I'm guessing as I get used to it, it will be less and less work. So, um, and it'll be a little bit more habitual and it'll be less stressful to come up with videos. So I'm doing more dry brushing, it looks like, up there on her little scrunchie. So I think I ended up adding like <laughs> the original base pink back to it because I just I just wanted it to be a certain way and it wasn't working out. So her uh, top of her bun kind of looks like a yarn ball or something. <laughs> and all of these little marks that I'm making right now were done with dry brush. Um, and if you're not aware of how dry brushing works is it's literally you take a dry brush and you dip it in paint and you drag it across the surface. You can see right there it's not actually dry brushing because I got my brush wet on accident. <laughs> um, but uh, so it's a dry brush with a little bit of paint on it and you just drag it across the surface of the paper like really lightly and it just kind of like like drags along the grooves of the paper and the paint and it gives like a really cool textury effect it's something you'll see a lot in like like mid-century modern art and like 50s illustration um, it's really popular to do with gouache for sure um, and I'm noticing a lot of digital art that does like a dry brush technique um, but yeah, the, the trick with dry brushes, just don't get your brush wet. So it can be kind of hard with, uh, 
with gouache because you have to add water to the paint to kind of activate it. So what I like to do when I dry brush is usually just squeeze out a new little blob of paint and it, if it's dried and I just do a new blob of paint because if I don't, you know, it's really hard to get the ratio of water to gouache paint just right and uh, it usually ends up just reactivating the paint underneath it and just kind of mixing, which is fine, but it's not what we want if we're doing dry brushing. So, holy cow, I'm moving the paper around so much. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed gouache lately. It's been really fun. It seems to be my medium of choice at the moment. I, I want to start doing some sketchbook stuff with gouache. I feel like it would be a really fun way to kind of pop out some ideas real quick um, and some quick little finished doodles and stuff. Things like this that I'm working on right now. And I just, I need to get better at working on sketchbooks because I tend to just like sketch on sketch paper and that works and everything, but it would be really nice to have like some sort of like one place, some sort of collective where I can just keep all of my sketches and kind of enjoy them as one unit too. Um, that's one of my favorite things about looking through sketchbooks is it's just kind of like, it's like a journal, you know? And it just feels like a chronological like expression of how you were feeling throughout, you know, the year. Usually I fill up a sketch, sketchbook type space in a year. But yeah, I really am bad about just keeping a sketchbook and filling it out. I just sketch everywhere and I don't know. I think that's, I, I really, next year, I think especially I'll, I think that'll be one of my focuses is trying to make sure I can, uh, I'm sketching a lot and it's all in one place and it's just like something I can look back on later and potentially publish into like a little book for, for all y'all to look at and enjoy. So I think I'm finishing up now. I'm just kind of adding little dinky details and stuff like that, noodling around, making sure there's no weird errant paint splotches and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so this was kind of a weird type of video for me to do. I, I usually just do the music and I'm like, that's good. So I probably won't be doing a lot of like chit chatty type things. But uh, I do know I want to show a tour of my new studio space, so I'll probably try to do something like that soon. Um, I'll probably start working on that, because I'm guessing it'll be a lot of work to edit and all that. But, but once in a while, uh, I'll probably pop in and talk a little bit. If there's any sort of video in particular you'd like to see, let me know. Always let me know, because I get... I lose a little bit of creativity with making these videos. I run out of ideas pretty quick. So any ideas are welcome. Like if you want to see like some supplies, uh, like supply hauls or just even just process videos like this or chit chats, whatever, or any sort of tutorials, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it. That is the piece. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening and subscribe or whatever. Don't, if you don't want to, I don't, I honestly am just doing these for fun. So don't feel like you have to, but I hope you enjoyed and I hope maybe it kind of was a little informative or at least relaxing or fun to listen to and watch at the same time. Thanks again for stopping by and uh, chat with y'all later. See ya.